Hello, I'm Bo, the FPV guy, and today I have with me a box that Align have sent us. As you know, lately when Align released their new M480 and M690 super awesome multi rotors, I have one standing right here that we're going to install this to. When they released those, they also released a really interesting gimbal. It's about $1,300 and it's a direct competitor to the famous C15, the Sen Muse. I have one of those right here. That is the C15, of course, right now is the standard. This is how probably the best gimbal you can get on the market right now. So in front of me, I have the box from Align. And the reason they sent that to us is because there is some issues with tuning of the gimbal. So what we're gonna do, today I'm gonna unbox this, I'm gonna take a look at it, and we're gonna put it together and show you how to install or at least mount it on here. Once we've done that, we're gonna make a new video where we're gonna step by step go through how to install any camera on here, or at least any camera that fits within reason, such as a Nex7 or a GH camera and install that on the gimbal. We're gonna balance it out in the video, and then we're gonna go ahead and tune it up together with you so you know how to tune it. So that's what we're gonna do, but today we're gonna to unbox it. So let's start cracking this open. This is official, is an Align G3GH gimbal. It's called the G3GH. There we go. Paper. Uh, it seems all expensive stuff comes in boxes with paper. And a box inside. Ah, there we go. So, here we go. This is the gimbal. The GH G3. And there's a brief illustration here. And let's get inside this box next. Again, all the new things from Align comes with branded Align tape. And just like the helicopter or like the multi-rotor, it comes with a, what is that called? A holograph, hologram sticker with a serial number right here. I guess we have to cut this too. I don't have a knife with me. I'm using a screwdriver. But screwdrivers work. box manual I thought Matt just told me there was no manual because Matt printed me one I guess we have one here after all Matt and yeah, what we got the empty box to make sure it doesn't roll around and in here is the gimbal Ooh, this is really nice. Wow. That is actually a really nice gimbal. Oh my goodness, look at this. Okay, so what we have here is the main gimbal. And let me just empty the box and then we'll come right back to this. All right, so here's one more of the positioning, one more positioning box, and inside here is the remainder of the good stuff. I see the mounting plate right here, and we're gonna mount these rails over here. So we are basically done with this now. Like that. I'm gonna turn that right here. Bring the gimbal up here, and what you see is there is a place to put the camera screw. So the camera would come on right here and the lens looks out that way right there. And I don't know actually if I can balance this camera because what I have on right here is 15 millimeter body cap, which is right now gonna make it, it's gonna need some more front weight, but we'll figure out if we can balance that. And the way you can balance this gimbal, I really like that it's so easy accessible. Right here is screws, and it also has little millimeter index. You can probably see those little white lines right there. 
So you can make, if you have different cameras, you can make notes about that camera this and that needs to go to so many millimeters and you can move the gimbal and quickly set it back off for balance with some other. Here is the HDMI plug. Goes into the camera and over here it spits out SD so that you can actually see what the camera is recording. On the back here, and here is the data and the S bus, and you can see the plugs that you really, really need to be careful of. Here's the S bus, and right below it is set, and then there's DC 12 volts. If you put the 12 volt cable that is identical to the S bus cable into the S bus, you fry the gimbal. Do not do that. So make sure you mark the DC 12 volt cable so that it only is ever put into the 12 volt port, please. The other thing I see here, I see a couple of fingerprints. And I wanna make sure I mention, because a lot of people already have mentioned that they took the gimbals out of the box and there was fingerprints or there was sign that somebody had tightened the screw into the base. And we talked a little bit with a line about that and it's my impression from them that basically each one of these gimbals is having a camera attached and screwed in before it's being shipped. So you should expect that the gimbal looks like it has been handled to some degree. It should not look used, but it should probably look like I have had it in my hand, tighten it in and make sure. So this one is supposed to be ready to go pretty much with a GH4 camera, or at least it has been test fired and is basically working, but may need to be tuned. I'm not sure what the exact standard for shipment is, and we're gonna find that out very quickly also, but our goal here is to mount the camera and tune the gimbal. The next thing I have to do, up here, there's a whole bunch of little screw holes on the flange on the yaw, mo yaw motor. Okay, I'm kinda holding onto this, and the motor up here is turning around. Also note there's a hole in this, so, I can see you. I don't know if you could see me through it, but the light goes through. So you're able to drop a cable down here in case you want to take advantage of doing 360 degrees spinning around with this, not just coming down to here. I've reached for a pair of scissors and let's crack this open. There. Ah, I like this. Again, inside we're finding here two a two millimeter and a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. That is the same wrenches that was included with the aircraft, meaning that the set of wrenches you have for the aircraft will do all the adjustments you need to do to the gimbal. I love that. I hate when you end up with tons of different little pieces of tools. Here is a camera fixing screw. Excellent, we need that. And here is the st shock absorber housing. I like it. So that is that. We're definitely gonna need that out. So let's crack it open. This has three screws right here. I really like it. This is something I really like about a line that the screws are already sitting in the part where they need to go. And they're gonna go into the motor here. And let's get some more parts out. We find a bag of dampers. These are pretty firm dampers and for a long time people were using the theory they needed to be really, really soft, but lately dampers are getting harder and it seems to me that that's working well. Oh, look at this. A line has also included an additional box or bag of dampers and these are, these feel softer, I think. I can't really feel the difference, but we're getting two different densities of dampers in the kit. So that is gonna help. So a line is basically including two different densities of these gimbal things here. And when I look at this, I am seeing a total of four holes times four, so that's 16. So I'm assuming that you can put as many as that, but you probably don't necessarily always need it. And you can mix and match the two different densities to get the firmness you want. So here is the top part. 
And that is the part that's gonna attach right up here. So now we, the last thing we have is there's four of these spacer blocks. So this is the mechanics, we're gonna put that together. There's two spare dampers and a couple of extra screws. I suspect that we may or may not need that, we'll find out. So we'll put that down here. And here is a power cord and also the AV video cable that goes into the OSD. And finally, there is an SBAR signal cable. So these two cables here need to be first plugged in inside here and in the control unit. And then these two cables pulls all the way down and is going to plug in. And remember again, make sure you mark the one that has power on it with a red piece of tape so you don't accidentally plug it into the SBUS port because if you do, the gimbal is toast. Finally, here is the top hot shoe. This thing attaches on the front right here and up right here on the front and it goes to the hot shoe of the camera to remove vibrations. So that's the last thing we're gonna get to and let's take a look Hey, hey, dogs. Okay, so the general assembly description is right here. And what we see is that this tray is going to come on this way. And it's going to have the hollow part down. And then we're gonna put the dampers underneath and the part underneath right here that carries and reaches up to the connector bar. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna attach these four, and then we're gonna attach them to here, and then we're gonna attach it to there. I'm going to put this away real quickly, and we're gonna get these ones up. And what we need here, I'm gonna cut all these bags open in one go. And this is the ones that goes underneath, has the gimbal retainer sticking up. And you can see there's holes right here and these holes. So let's get them out of the plastic bags. We don't need plastic bags. Real men don't save plastic bags. Actually, real men don't save boxes either. I never need to ship anything, I crash it first. There we go. Let's see if this one. Ah, wait, they didn't even heat seal these. These are identical on both sides. And again, this part, the way I like it, again, comes with the screws attached and the screws in the bottom. So let's see what screw we need. And off we go with a 2.5. Of course, you don't have to watch all of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sample this and fast forward. So hold on for a second. One little trick you wanna know, because I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the clamps the loose side of this clamp, I'm gonna make face out. Because if you have the loose side facing in, you're not gonna be able to screw it in place. So the loose side on the clamp faces to the outside. That way can, you can easily install it. Okay, and putting the last screw in, the one thing I keep noticing is these are very tight tolerances. Align really does a great job on the manufacturing. And when they get in, it helps to leave the other one a little loose so it both screws comes in easily. When you're done with that, I'm tightening it up kind of finger tight. I'm not putting my wrist, wrist into it because I might don't want to strip any of the screws, but this is very firm. And you also, they come with dry a Loctite on it, which really is gonna be enough because there's not very much vibration going on right here. And this is not a 
majorly moving part. So now we have assembled these four. As I said, the loose part here, the thin loose part is going to be towards the outside on both sides so you can get to lock them down after it's installed. The next thing we have to do is grab some of those gimbal dampers. I don't know for sure, but the white ones feel softer and they're probably gonna be easier to install. So guess which ones I'm gonna install? The light ones, of course. There we go. And this one is going to come on top of this because this is a compression steam. That means you don't have to worry about this falling away with your camera. It sits on top and it's gonna compress the dampers. The way I usually get these in is by tucking them in from one side and then massaging the rest in like that. So we're gonna get all, tr all three in each of these corners and then we're gonna proceed and install them to here. Okay. Oh, Oh, the bracket is really gorgeous. Their machining is immaculate. Getting these things installed is a little bit fiddly. And here I'm putting the last one on right here. What I'm doing again is I'm kind of tucking it underneath and just getting it up in one corner. And then it kind of comes along with it. And that was one and one more. So they're not that hard to do and you just kind of got to get used to massaging them up. You can see there's two of them is in place now. And here comes one more, sticking it in like this. So it comes up a little bit and then just push from the other side and it comes right up there. The one thing I'm seeing looking at these milled parts, the manufacturer, the workmanship on this is absolutely spectacular. This is beautiful parts. We, we've seen a lot of cheap crap plastic gimbals. This is not one of them. This is a gorgeous gimbal. So let's get the main gimbal back and get it attached. And I can't really see the way the drawing looks. It looks like this probably should be the other way around. But once you mount it, you're going to see this polished line from below. The function of the gimbal is going to be the same either way you mount this. So we're going to mount it like this. And then we have to grab a screw and attach it. I was kind of wondering if this had to be attached from below and literally hang the motor, but it doesn't look like there is a smart way to do that. And you can see why I'm attaching it right here. Screw is coming from down here and I'm just pulling it up. I'm not going to snuck it up until we get to the last screw. When all three of them are in place, I'm going to come back and tighten them up really nicely. So having put the last one in, we're going to come back real quickly and tighten these screws up so that they all get really nice and tight. Oh, this disconnected my screwdriver. And the last screw. There. Again, you tighten it down. Don't try to like twist it off. Now looking at this, and again, like I told you before, there's a little millimeter index down here for adjustment up on the balancing arm, the roll bar, also has millimeters for adjustment. So setting this up for multiple cameras are gonna be very easy. And you're also gonna find that as people start using these, gimbal geeks like Matt is gonna write his prescription for a particular camera. So he will say, and next this and this, has so many millimeters here, so many millimeters offset here with this lens, and then you need to use these numbers so what you want to do is everybody share your settings because then that way we'll very fast get a database or a list on the internet 
of settings for different cameras with this gimbal. This is, this is really made beautifully. And I had before I had here the, let's see how heavy is it? This is virtually the same weight. This is a 1.2 kilogram or 1200 gram gimbal. So plus a 600 gram camera, you're looking at about 1800 or almost two kilograms or four pounds worth of payload right here. Manufacturing wise, geez, I don't know. It is milled aluminum, it's the same materials. This is probably made, the G tree is probably made as pretty and as nicely made as the Sin Muse. I don't want to call it better or worse, but this is a valid hardware wise. It looks as good as the Sin Muse. This is really, really a beautiful gimbal. So let's take this down. And while we talk about parts, also up on the yaw motor here, you see the screw down here that allows you to move the yaw motor back and forth because to have a perfectly balanced gimbal, you also want it to balance this way. So there it is. We are gonna demonstrate a camera in it, but we're gonna do the tuning and balancing later. I don't know, we need something that's a little bit long. That is one solid plastic back. probably needs to come forward a good bit. There's definitely some imbalance here. See what we want, a perfectly balanced gimbal. When I let go, it should stay exactly where it is. And as you can tell, it isn't staying exactly where it is. So this camera isn't perfectly balanced and it also needs to move to the side. But since it's not the camera the gimbal is made for, I'm not gonna do it right now. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna hang it up here real quickly for a demo. And now the way we get this to hang here is, see if I can look underneath here. We basically just, and what I have here, we have been testing some other gimbals. And this is a hanger for a different, for X aircraft 60 millimeter tubes and of course that's available on the website but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just swing these up ah it doesn't work I hate when that happens so as we're standing here Matt has a better suggestion he always has better suggestions you notice that Try both ways. so Here's what we're this gonna do. Lazy, we are gonna release the screws here that holds the rail. We're gonna pull the rail out and then we're gonna stick it back in. If it doesn't work, you can call me stupid. If it doesn't work, we get to call Matt stupid. Let's hope this doesn't work. I mean, so tube is out. And I'm also gonna take the screws I started removing and put them back into the gimbal. You wanna just, let's just hang it up first. I think you, oh no, I was just gonna do it from out here, scoot it all the way through, come through the next one. That way too, that's much better. There you go. Matt said that's much better. If Matt says that what I came up with is much better, then it definitely is. <laughs> no, I meant my original method. Oh, <laughs> well. So, now to secure it, we have to come up here and secure the rail hangers and that one right there. Now the rail is not going anywhere and even if everything fell apart, it couldn't really fall off. The next thing I'm doing, and Matt is doing it on the other side, I'm putting the screws back into the clamps. And when you do that, make sure you, you straighten the plate out so it doesn't get tight at an angle. Right. 
So basically having installed it here, we pull the tubes out, put them through the outer things, then through the aircraft holders and further back. So we pushed the tubes in and it was much easier than take the clamps apart. Then we have tightened up the clamps. And when you do that, you need to make sure this is hung on straight. So just kind of straighten it up when you tighten it up. So here it is. This camera now needs to be balanced. So as we're setting up here, as you saw, we kind of had a hard time at using two and a half millimeter screws on top and two millimeters on the bottom and a couple of guys like us that confuses us. Um, we have lifted up the ring by releasing the screws here. So the camera now will stay in position. It doesn't go further up than that. So that is not a lot of roll but I guess they don't intend for you to be flying at 45 degrees with this thing. The other thing was we released here and we have pushed the entire side sideways. See, so now it pretty much stays at the angle I let it go. And that's what your gimbal have to do before you can remotely start to tune this. It has to stay in place and be perfectly balanced. Once it's perfectly balanced, you can move on to tuning. And there is a possibility that the stock gains may just work with a perfectly balanced gimbal. All righty, so this, well, that's the HMI out. How the heck do we get it attached? <coughs> have to plug it into the uh, flight controller, I think. Yeah, and the simplest way to do that is actually turn this entire thing 180 degrees so you get the pan motor power right here. See that thing? So you mounted it wrong? No, no, because we can also, but we have to come up through that, in through that hole in the bottom. Yeah, I think and that's fine. Yeah. I think it looks better with the cable. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Okay, so trying to sort out the potential risk of frying the controller, of course Matt and I was petrified that we would be the first ones to fry the next one. And as we were trying to get some power on this really quickly, we eyeballed and saw that we could grab one of the JR plugs into the controller. We did measure that and the controller on the, the plug underneath where it says FPV has 12 volts. So you can put the signal wire up and then the signal, you have it right here. But this is the risk right now. And this little cable it's so tempting to plug into this, but this is the control cable, the S-Bus cable. Don't use it for power. This one, however, we tested, and when this is plugged in, where it says signal to the white to the light wire, then you have signal to signal, and we tested it down to here. You can do the same thing to verify it. You should now have ground on the brown and power on that and that should be when you look at the drawing go to the page the gimbal power on and off self test if you look down here it says power up procedure when used as handheld and here we can see that on the back of the controller power needs to be on the middle and ground to the right so you need to make sure that you have power in the middle of this plug and ground to the right on this plug when you plug it in down here or up here. That way you have the right signal. So be really cautious with this and whatever you do, don't get smart and power this thing up because this is reversed and will most likely fry something. I'm just guessing because we have heard of otherwise smart people having accidents. So we're trying to shoot this down and I would say right now really align you need to make some marked and put some markers, stickers on these things so people don't make mistakes. And it probably also be good if the polarity on all cables would be correct as this one is a reversed polarity with the potential for some serious headache. All right, so we plugged in, there is a total of three cables and the one cable looks like this and that is the S-Bus cable from the controller. Then we have 
this teeny little one here, which is probably an alternative SBUS cable. And since Matt and I was being impatient, what we did was we used a servo extension cable to plug in up here. And down here is the cable that looks like this, but it has a JST end on it. That is the correct one to use to power. And when we first put the JR extension servo extension cable in here, we were reaching for this because this fits right in. It looks like a nice little jumper for powering. And that's what we definitely can't do. And we walked around it, we measured everything, and we decided we have to use the one with the JR slider on top. So having decided that, we plugged it in, we put it in, and we mounted it into the top base of the gimbal. Now, here comes now the test. Did you turn the smoke detector off? I think this is working. Ho oh, ho, look at this. And there, we have a red light on the back side, so this is working. It's not tuned right, and you can see this is jittering a bit, but eh, there's a couple of things to tune at this point. But we definitely have a working gimbal here. That's, I have no idea how it figured out what is forward. I'm sure Matt will be able to tell us in the tuning video. Yeah, so, so Matt is saying it probably has a yaw sensor. That makes sense to me. So bottom line is we have not done it entirely right, but we have used the JST cable or JR cable down and connected. We made an extension so that we're able to remove it and unplug it here. And if we want to take the gimbal off, and then we have plugged it into the base up here where it says PSU. And that is ready to get tuned. And there you go. So the number one message I'm gonna end with is this little thing you cannot use to connect power to your aircraft. If you do, smoke could very well be the result. And you know how multi-rotor technology is actually smoke powered and you don't want to let it out because if you see a puff of smoke, it usually stops working. So I believe it's all smoke powered. <laughs> it's working and we didn't fry anything. Pretty freaking awesome. Why haven't you tuned this yet? That it also should, but it doesn't look like it. I think the cables go separately of this. Let's start putting it together and see what we have in the back here. And this is where we turn off Matt's alarm clock. <laughs>